We are down in Texas about to drive the updated 2025 Chevrolet Tahoe and Suburban. We'll be trying out a bunch of different trims, different engine combinations, all to see what the updated refreshed new Suburban and Tahoe is like. We're starting off at the top of the line with the Suburban High Country and this one is on 24 inch wheels. Yeah, you can get 24 inch wheels on the new Tahoe and Suburban. And this one also has the three liter Duramax, which is an engine that I like quite a lot in these large SUVs. Sadly, the Cadillac Escalade no longer will be offered with the three liter Duramax, but the Tahoe and Suburban is now available with an updated three liter Duramax. Let's see what it's like. We also have the built-in Google Assistant. Okay, Google, play Sirius XM BPM. Okay, asking Sirius XM to play BPM. So these drive programs can be a little bit chaotic, a little bit hectic. There's a lot of different vehicles, a pretty crazy schedule. You don't always get the most amount of time with each vehicle. So I'm gonna do a more casual vlog style video, taking you guys along with me as we experience all the different Tahoes and Suburbans that Chevy has on display for us to try out. Initial impressions, we've got 40 minutes with this one doing a drive loop to see what it's like. And then we'll hop into the next one and just get some initial early impressions and show you guys what the updated one are all like. I found some of the pullovers, so let's take a quick exterior tour of the Suburban. You see those power deployable running boards, the side steps just retracted, and we have 24 inch wheels. These are 24 inch wheels on the Suburban. They're huge, they look nice, and they match the overall size and proportions of this full size SUV quite well. But man, 24 inch wheels, those are big. This is a mid-cycle refresh, so they updated the front fascia, the lighting, and something cool on the top tier trims is the welcome lighting. So watch as I unlock, you get the sweep animation across the lights and the DRL, that's really cool. And then when you lock, it goes away. Same thing out back, if we take a look at these slightly updated tail lights, get the welcome sweep right there. Pretty cool, lighting animation is something they add to the top tier trims to make them a little more premium. You see the Duramax badge back here. We've got the squared off quad exhaust tips. I like the three liter Duramax quite a lot. I got to experience it in the Cadillac Escalade, but sadly they're no longer going to offer it in the Escalade due to lack of customer demand. Instead, we get it in the updated Suburban and Tahoe, and it makes more power and torque than before, about 10% more horsepower. So 305 horsepower, 495 pound-feet of torque, and because it's a diesel, it gets pretty impressive fuel economy, so your range is gonna be quite nice too. So the three liter Duramax diesel is actually gonna be available on the Z71 trim too. So that's definitely nice, in addition to the gas-powered 5.3 liter V8 and the 6.2 liter V8. Let's hop inside. We have the high country door sill plate there, brown leather, and exposed grain wood. You can actually feel the texture on this wood. This is a very large, best-in-class 17.7-inch infotainment screen, and you get it on all the different trims. There's no smaller base screen on the lower-tier trims. They all have the 17.7-inch screen, and if you've been in a newer Chevy vehicle, it's immediately very familiar. The UI, the interface, everything here, including the digital cluster, digital rear view mirror. You can turn this off if you want a conventional one, but it's really nice in SUVs because let's just say you have people and cargo back there, right? Blocking your view out the back of a conventional mirror. The camera solves that, right? You can look out back and also helps the visibility at night, right? Eliminates glare from headlights behind you, from people who can't seem to turn off their high beams driving behind you. Digital rear view mirror is one of my favorite features in modern GM vehicles. So there's a lot of different toggles and buttons up here. That's for the sunshade. This is for the center console, which I can slide forward and backwards and expose this little like hidden container down here. You can put stuff in that drawer or you can put your bag here or something like that. And you can actually move the armrest forward again so you still have it here conveniently close by. Cup holders, plenty of storage, USB ports, USB-C, USB-A, wireless charging pad. You have actual physical climate controls which are redundant to the touchscreen ones. So you can use a touchscreen once, they're always here regardless of which screen you're on, right? Or you can have the physical ones if you don't like using the touchscreen. So that's really nice, you have the option for both of those, but your heated cooled seats are up here in the screen. And then the park reverse neutral drive, your transmission selector has moved up here, which is why you have all this space in the middle now instead of having to pick down here or have buttons or something like that. It's a nice interior. You got a high country badge over there on the side, brown leather 
on the seats. We have the stitching there on the headrest. Not bad. And this one has the optional air suspension, so I can change the ride height here. And you see all these physical controls from your transportation, your four-wheel drive system, your headlights. You can pull up a shortcut for your cameras, the 360 view camera with the wheel view too, the front wheels. You can see as I turn the steering wheel. The reason I like a powertrain like the 3 liter Duramax and a platform like this is you get a lot of low end torque. And that's what you want in a vehicle like this, a truck, SUV, or a luxury experience, right? It's important for towing, but also for just around town driving. And the 3 liter Duramax absolutely delivers. I think it's a great balance of the packaging, right? It fits in this platform. I don't know if the big 6.6 .6 liter Duramax L5P would fit. That's for the heavy duty trucks but it's smooth, very torquey. I don't notice any of the unpleasant things that you might consider with older diesel powertrains, right? Maybe it's a little clattery or it smells or something like that. I think it's really nice. And obviously they deemed it good enough to put in the Cadillac Escalade at one point. And I spent a week living with an Escalade with the Duramax. And I was like, this is the powertrain I would get in the Escalade until the Escalade V came out. Then I was like, I want that one. But you know, back to the Suburban. I think this is a great powertrain combination in a big SUV like this. If you don't want the diesel, right? You can get the gas. The High Country gives you the 6.2 liter gas V8. That makes 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. And then we have the 5.3 liter gas V8. That is the base V8. That makes 400 or 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. So all of the powertrains make more torque than horsepower because that's what's important in a vehicle like this for towing and for just all around driving in a larger, heavier vehicle. So initial impressions driving this high country, the platform feels as you would expect, right? It is a truck based platform. So feel a bit more motion through the body, but this one here has the air suspension. We have three different suspension options. You have air suspension paired with magnetic ride. You can have just magnetic ride or you have the passive coils on the base level. So it's pretty comfortable, pretty well isolated. Even though we're on 24 inch wheels, still rides reasonably well and it just drives as I expect it to. This is again, a mid-cycle refresh on the generation that came out in 2021, I believe, of the latest Suburban and Tahoe. But for a mid-cycle, there's actually a good amount of stuff they changed. You know, the whole front fascia, rear fascia lighting, you have the interior, the new screens and a little touches there, um, some more technology and a lot of wheel options. I just, I keep asking them to clarify, like how many wheel options are available? And it's 23. 23 different kinds of wheels you can option on the Suburban and Tahoe. They're obviously tied to different trim levels, right? Like the Z71 only gets the off-road focused ones, but still 23 different wheels, holy complexity. With that, we are going to head our way back to the hub and swap into a different vehicle, drive that and have more thoughts on comparing them and seeing what they're like. We are about to take out the RST Performance Package, which is more street oriented and it's got some pretty cool goodies on it. It's got components from the Police Pursuit Vehicle. We have exhaust, intake, a tune. So this will be fun to see what this is like. We're about to take this for a quick drive and take a look at the other Suburbans they have on display here for us. I believe this is a 1990 Chevrolet Suburban. So that is older than me. Uh, and then a 1946 Suburban. Wow, the longest running nameplate in America, longer than anything else out there, the Chevrolet Suburban. We have a slightly lowered ride height to match the police Tahoe and the same tires, the Firestones from the cop car. And then the exhaust around has been changed along with the intake under the hood. Let me go ahead and pop the hood. But you don't get any like specific branding of performance package or anything. It just looks like an RST. That looks nice there, the upgraded intake, the airbox and the 6.2 liter gas V8. Start her up, give it a couple revs. Not bad. <laughs> All right, this definitely fulfills the performance part of the performance packets. A bunch of little components, but they add up to make this thing actually a bit more fun. It's not the power, but the noise, right? You get a little more of that V8 rumble back there. And I think the, the suspension drop and the police pursuit vehicle calibration for the suspension, the components definitely 
We'll make this thing a bit more fun. And I actually think the steering feels a little bit, uh, a little heavier too, which I like. I definitely like. Let me get out of this construction zone. You actually can hear some induction noise, intake noise up front. <laughs> no, it's definitely not quick, right? For that, we need a supercharger on top. That's what Chevy really, really needs to do. Do a Tahoe RST, whatever you want to call it, and put the LT4 in this thing. Pretty, pretty please. Like, why can't we have that? We have the Escalade V. I am sure there'll be people who would be willing to spend the money for it. Absolutely, right? But in the meantime, this is the fastest Tahoe you can buy and is the closest you can get to owning a police Tahoe with a proper interior, right? Because like police cars have like nothing on the inside. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Cool. All right. We're going to go hop in a Z71 now. I want to see what the Z71 is like. So this is maximum ride height on the Z71. Way more ground clearance, and you see much more aggressive off-road oriented tires, way more sidewall with smaller wheels, total different personality compared to that suburban high country we were driving earlier. And since we're raised all the way up, we can look underneath. We've got the skid plate down there, the red tow hooks, and the whole front fascia of the grill is all blacked out, the black Chevy bow tie. See the big Z71 badge on the side. The blacked out Suburban badge there too. <laughs> I think it's pretty tall right now actually. Quite a bit of ride height increase with the air suspension. We have these circular exhaust tips back here and because this one is the Duramax with the Duramax badge, the first time ever you can get the Duramax on the Z71s. You also get the clear taillights back here instead of the tinted red ones. So there is the Z71 Suburban. Take a look at these drive mode graphics. So here is normal, we've got sport, off-road and tow haul so this is now entry exit makes it much easier to step up and out way lower that's one of the best parts of air suspension you can change your ride height and it's comfortable so this has the air suspension with magnetic ride again you can do regular magnetic ride or you just have the base passive coils on the higher trim ones they come with the fancier suspension and it definitely is nice so Let's hop back in and head back, and I think we might be done for today. Been doing a lot of driving and talking and filming, and I am tired. We start off day two nice and early. We're hopping into uh, RST Performance Edition again and driving back towards Fort Worth. We've got the full lineup, all the uh, Tahoes and Suburbans. So let me show you that real quick. So we'll be driving this Tahoe RST again. We can see the full lineup. We've got Suburban High Countries. We've got Z71s. And I believe there's actually even some base cars. Maybe not here, but I want to check out the LS later on too. All right, cold start in the RST. Good morning, Dallas. Straight into traffic. Texas has a ridiculous highway system with lanes going everywhere, and it's a little bit confusing, but there's also, oh, that is a lot of traffic. <laughs> and we picked one without Super Cruise. Aw, oh, I messed up. <laughs> Not bad. All right, so we are approaching Billy Bob's of Texas, wrapping up our drive in the RST Performance. Some thoughts. It actually rides pretty well despite not having air suspension. This one has the regular magnetic ride. It does make a nice noise. The exhaust, you can hear a little more rumble back there. And it's just a comfortable big SUV as you would expect for a Tahoe and or Suburban. The tech is nice, good sound system. What do you think, Miles? Any thoughts? I think, um this whole infotainment was a much needed upgrade. Yes. And it's much better suited for what type of driver will be driving this car. And I mean, just like you can see how big that screen is. So yeah. It's as clear as you can possibly get. Feet. And it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It still has CarPlay and Android Auto. We're using the built-in Google, but all of your Tahoes and Suburbans still have CarPlay and Android Auto. And that is a good thing. At the light, turn left onto Stockyards Boulevard. Then your destination will be on the right. Thank you, Google. <laughs> 
So we've driven a couple different trims, mainly the higher end one. So let's give the entry level LS a shot. This black one here, let's see what it's like. Just look at the difference in wheel sizes. This one has the optional 24 inch wheels. And then the LS here is on 18 inch wheels. This might be the largest range in wheel sizes on a single model, this and the Silverado EV, which also goes up to 24 inch wheels. But that's a pretty hilarious contrast in wheel diameter size. You have the same updated lighting up front. It does not have the welcome sequence. We got fixed side steps here. And in we go. You do get the same 11 inch driver information cluster, the 17.7 inch infotainment screen. So even on the base model, but this one is the nine seat configuration. So we can move this up here. And now you have three seats across the front. And then we also have three seats in the second row and three in the back. So if you really need to haul a lot of people, nine seat configuration in the Suburban LS. As the base model, we still have a 5.3 liter gas V8. So even the entry level Tahoe and Suburban comes with a gas V8. And we don't have any of the fancy suspension tech here. No air suspension, no magnetic ride. So just the passive coils. So you get to kind of feel what it's like without any of that masking higher end technology. And it's still rides pretty well it drives fine it definitely feels a little bit more truck like i think in some of the motions and so forth but it's uh pretty much as you would expect a 5.3 liter is not as strong as the 6.2 for sure but it definitely gets the job done it's very interesting that chevy still just offers gas v8s right most of the competitors have gone to smaller force induction there's no hybrid setup available their play for efficiency and force induction is the duramax the diesel one available on this platform there i got to uh also try out the entry level ls it's not cheap by any standard right you're still starting in the sixty thousand dollar range but to get a big big suv like this i can seat nine people plenty of cargo and you still have a lot of stuff as standard is a decent value i would say and i think this interior does a good job of not feeling rental grade sometimes entry level trims can feel just a little cheap on the inside right you still get some nice trim there across the dash and of course the big screens and the driver cluster digital cluster definitely help make this feel still relatively premium you don't get the big heads-up display and you see some missing buttons like no heated steering wheel no super cruise here and so forth like no air suspension stuff there but a lot of the stuff is still very similar the screens definitely help it feel nice and modern this area is the same you have usb-c charging ports usb-a charging ports a lot of little storage things on the center console if you have it folded down when you don't need to have somebody sitting here but man seating nine people that's uh definitely practicality for sure you have no sunroof up there we don't have the digital rearview mirror but we still have a v8 <laughs> Heading out again, this time we're in a Premier, which has the special interior color, the Sky Cool Gray, which is exclusive just to this trim. Looks nice with that dark brown wood. And this one's got Super Cruise. Look at that, Super Cruise. I'm gonna go on a quick drive route, and I'm gonna use this one for a more detailed interior tour. Found a cool spot under the freeway by this like boat launch area by the water to get some nice shots of the Suburban Premier I'm driving. Quick exterior tour, we've got the chrome wheels on this one with this blue exterior paint and the chrome mirror caps, the badging on the side. And then up front, you also have the chrome front grille. So again, very different personality as you compare it to the RST and the Z71. This is the Suburban, so it's the longer wheelbase one. And coming around back, we've got circular exhaust tips, a Premier badge. This one has the gas V8 and the clear taillight lenses. Now let's do an interior tour with this cool interior color, this light sky cool gray. I think that's what they call it, but it's a light gray, almost white, but not like pure white. So hopefully it doesn't get dirty too easily. Got the full leather interior, the perforation, so cooled seats on this one. It has Super Cruise. Again, Premier and High Country are the more luxury leaning ones, the higher end on the pricing spectrum. Got the power side steps, let's hop in. Super Cruise is going to be available later Q1. So Super Cruise and Diesel is going to be available Q1 2025. We're in Q4 right now of 2024 and production and delivery should be starting like any moment now of the new 25 Suburban and Tahoe. 
We can then go home to all of our different app icons. So everything is accessible through here, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, your climate, your different apps like Spotify and so forth. And you can also drag the shortcut to the top there. So now if I wanna access my cameras, I can just go to that shortcut there, pull up all my different camera views, and I could just drag something up there. If I want, for example, Alexa up here on the top, you can have a shortcut up there. All the different screens I have, my climate still here on the bottom. So we've got built-in Google Maps running. We've got obviously all your different entertainment sources from Sirius to Bluetooth to uh, regular radio and so forth. We can go back home to all the different apps here. Auto Park Assist, your climate settings, and you see the graphics are, are pretty nice. Good refresh rate on the screen. Also access your various controls, like your heads-up display, child safety locks, uh, power assist side steps and so forth. And obviously some people tow with their Suburbans and Tahoe. So you have trailering stuff here if you connect up your trailer. We have an actual physical volume knob here too that's actually like stuck onto the display, which is pretty cool. And as you increase the volume, there's a little graphic that goes up there. This is also for accessing those controls and so forth. So this screen is pretty nice. It's slightly angled towards the driver, very large display, but it doesn't overwhelm the cabin. It feels well integrated into the dash itself. And then we have the digital cluster here in the middle, which is also reconfigurable. You can go through your different views. You can have your Google Maps pulled up, full screen navigation on this 11 inch driver information cluster. And then we have a 15 inch heads up display. So there's a ton of digital displays, information being presented to you, and you can customize a lot of it. So there's a quick tour of the updated infotainment display screens in the new Suburban and Tahoe. We have the second row entertainment screens back here, and they're actually pretty large screens, but I was talking to my co-driver, Miles, about how these screens may not be the best, because honestly, I feel like most of the time people may just use an iPad back here, but we have the screens here. It's actually pulled up to the Chevrolet Tahoe website page of a web browser. You can have YouTube, Hulu, you can check vehicle status, how much fuel is remaining, and then plug in HDMI for entertainment if you want back here. We've got heated seats in the second row, so some climate controls here. You see charging ports along with the HDMI ports and the cup holders. And if this center console slides backwards, like we showed you earlier on, you would have easier access to the cup holders, but plenty of cup holders, plenty of space here. Second row captain's chairs. I have tons of headroom. So headroom and space is obviously not a problem in a Suburban or Tahoe. These are the full size big SUVs, including, let me go hop in the third row. Even in some of these big SUVs, this can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. I'm on the taller side, I'm like 6'2", 6'3", but back here, I have legroom. This is quite a large SUV. Look at that, that's a nice shot. You can see an open area, a lot of natural light coming in from uh, the large windows, the panoramic roof. And then also with the third row up, you still have tons of space back here for luggage. That's why people like the Suburban versus Tahoe, because even with the seats up, you can still put Plenty of suitcases back here, whatever you need, groceries, bikes, whatever you're doing with your family out. We should talk pricing of the different trims. I've mentioned a couple price points with the different vehicles I've been driving, but I've got my notes here for all the different price points of the different trims. So the LS starts at 61,500. These are prices before destination and delivery. The LT is 64,700. Then you step up to the RST and the Z71. RST is 69,500. The Z71 is 71,500. And then the Premier like this one here starts at 76,100. And the top of the line High Country starts at 81,200. Obviously, you can add on more options too. You can choose a different engine, right? You can go up to the Duramax, you can add Super Cruise and so forth, different packages. So that's the starting price points for the new updated 2025 Tahoe and Suburban. Some final thoughts on the updated 2025 Chevrolet Tahoe and Suburban. This is a very important vehicle in the Chevy lineup. It sells very well, very loyal buyers. 37% of the full-size SUV market is either a Tahoe or a Suburban, so they're doing quite well in the segment. The Suburban is about to celebrate its 90th birthday, the longest running nameplate in America. And this mid-cycle update is nice. It's what we need out of a mid-cycle to keep it nice and fresh. I mean, the main components are still carry over the same. Let me see if I can use Super Cruise. There we go, Super Cruise is always very nice. But the new screens, very much needed. The updates to the fascia, the lighting, gives it an invigoration, right? Makes it look fresh and new. 
uh, auto lane changes going on right now. Thank you very much, Super Cruise. Super Cruise is fantastic, right? So you got plenty of tech features, nice premium luxury features too, and so many options, right? Going across the different trims, you've got LS, LT, Z71, RST, Premier and High Country. It took me a little bit to memorize all of those different trims. And within different trims, you've got even more customizability, and it's pretty distinct personalities across the different trims. You got three different engines to pick between. So if I had to pick some of my favorite things about the updated Tahoe and Suburban from this early impressions drive, the diesel, the Duramax. I'm happy they're still offering it. When I found out they were uh, canceling the Duramax for the Escalade, I was like, aw, it is legitimately my favorite powertrain for the Cadillac Escalade. And you still get it here because it's smooth, it's torquey, it's efficient. In the Suburban with the big fuel tank and the Duramax, it'll do 750 miles on a tank. That's very far. That's probably farther on a road trip than the human bladder can support, right? 750 miles is definitely impressive. So I like the Duramax quite a lot in this powertrain setup. Let's see, what else do I really like? Um, the the interior update with the new screens and Super Cruise is definitely very welcome. And also another one would be like the driving dynamics are actually pretty good for a truck-based platform, a full-size SUV like this, especially in like the RST performance with the uh, lower suspension, the police spec dampers and so forth. I actually had a bit of fun driving that around. I wish they would do like a more cool like Halo performance model with like just a just an LT4, a supercharged 6.2, right? Wouldn't that be nice? And you would say like, oh, people don't buy that. I beg to differ. Look at the Durango Hellcat, right? That thing is an ancient, antiquated platform, but they shoved the supercharged V in and the people love that thing. So that would be cool to see from Chevrolet Performance because they have the credentials to back that up. Look at the Escalade V. So that'd be wishing. That's kind of not really uh, a realistic wish. I don't think it'll actually happen, unfortunately, but it would be really cool to see. Uh, what else is there to dislike about it? Not Nothing really. I mean... There's a reason why this does so well. This platform, the Suburban and Tahoe sells so well because people love the ingredients. It's huge, so much practicality in size. It looks pretty nice. Um, it's comfortable. You you can pick between an entry level LS, kind of your mainstream, just like family hauler, or you can go plush with the high country. And then if you want even more, they offer you GMC with the Yukon, and then you can go up another tier to the Escalade, right? So this family of full-size SUVs, it makes sense why it's so important and does well for General Motors. I'm just currently blowing by all of my exits right now using Super Cruise. So let me take over and we'll go ahead and exit the freeway as we loop back to Billy Bob's of Texas. <laughs> um, this is a very Texas experience this week. We went to the Texas State Fair last night. Everything was fried. They had fried lemonade. What, somebody got a uh, bacon fried cinnamon roll or something like that. I was like, holy crap. I found a grilled cheese sandwich. That was actually quite nice. But the State Fair of Texas was an interesting experience. It was like this crazy food hall, food stands, and then there were a bunch of cars on display. I went and found the ZR1 and Z06 immediately. But it's been fun coming out to experience the updated Chevrolet Tahoe and Suburban. Uh, it was cool trying out all the different trim levels from the more kind of off-road lifestyle focused one to on-road RST to the more plush luxurious ones. I like the styling updates. I am just rambling now, but there we go. First impressions of the Chevrolet Suburban. Is it worth the money? I think so. And customers will continue to buy these. It will sell very well. And I expect this refresh to be very welcome because immediately look at the screens and stuff. It just looks so much more modern and updated. And you still get a V8 in this platform. A lot of competitors have gone to twin turbo V6s. They're downsizing, but Chevrolet was like, no, you can have not one, but two different V8 options. So that's always cool too. Now just please give us a supercharged V8 option. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.